Yes, indeed. Hallelujah. Oh, mm-hmm. 
majesty, glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. The message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee and after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins and through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. 
there is a sound of exultion and victory. In the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live. And declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely. But he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. And have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected. Has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. second reading, a reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn receive, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have, be, have come to believe in vain. For I hand it on to you as the first importance what I, what I in turn have received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance <coughs> and appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so you proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, <laughs> 
Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying in the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in. And he saw and believed, for as yet he did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their home. When Mary stood, weeping outside the tomb, as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying. One at the head, and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know it was Jesus. She said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, There. She turned to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father in your Father. To my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Some of you, it's been a little while since you've been here, watched on YouTube and all that, and I know. 
the fact that God is speaking to you through everyone, yes. But probably more so to that woman in your life that's telling you to be on the church. Pray a little bit more. Reflect a little bit more. Now again, I'm not trying to say go to church every week, that's not my job. My job is to instruct you to at least be open to God's speaking to you, to receive God's word from all different avenues. But in particular, the living in the sick of God is from the Lord. May God bless you. May God keep you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We pray for the seven black sister churches of our diocese, St. Bartholomew's Cambridge, St. Cyprian's Roxbury, Church of the Holy Spirit, Mattapan, St. John and St. James, Roxbury, St. Mark's, Dorchester, St. Mary's, Dorchester, and our parish, St. Augustine and St. Martin, Boston. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the parishes of the Church of the Charles River Deanery, Church of the Redeemer, Chestnut Hill, Boston College Campus Ministry, Chestnut Hill, St. Dunstan's Church, Dover, Christ Church, Needham, Church of Periodical Club. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the church in the province of West Indies. We pray for the growth of this parish in mission, numbers, and impact for the building up of God's kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, either silently or aloud. With favor, we pray for your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father, whose glory fills the whole creation, in whose presence we find wherever we go. Preserve those who travel. Surround them with your loving care. Protect them from every danger and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with a whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. And also with you.
Good morning, church. We have some fun plans for you downstairs. Let's see, do we have any young people who might be interested in an Easter egg hunt? Just maybe raise your hand. Well, we have a treat in store for you. So what's going to happen is when the service closes, we're going to take a group photo. We're going to have everyone come up and take a group photo. And then I'm going to meet all of the young people who are interested in an Easter egg hunt downstairs. And you'll know where to meet me because there are lots of colorful baskets. So I'll meet you at that table and I will give you instructions. So to our team, we are going to let the younger people go first. So we're going to go in order of age. And the eggs will be in the undercock and around the church downstairs and in the sanctuary. So it should be a lot of fun. Um, so also, I'm going to let Lynn talk a little bit about the photos because we'll, we have a photo station set up downstairs. And I'll let Lynn explain that. Good morning. Good morning. So as Coffee said, we have a photo station. I'll be taking pictures and also after I take them, other people will be, uh, feel welcome to come and use the backdrop. So what we'll do is we'll take the pictures today, but we'll get them later because I don't have a printer. But uh, we'll take pictures today. And if you, after I'm done, if you'd like, feel free to use the backdrop downstairs beyond the, um, the dividers. That's where we'll be. All right, so before you go downstairs, everyone should come up to the altar. Yes. We're going to do a group photo.
Just play. <laughs> Oh, 
and also with you. We lift them to the Lord. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
We thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. The Lord is truly risen. Alleluia. Amen.